Hi, it's Nisi. So I live in Maryland, zone 7B, and I'm out here on the deck in the evening just to do some cleanup um, as it's starting to get cooler and things are dying back. And so what I want to share with you today is a, a few lessons learned, but kind of some tips. So about seven or eight tips of things for new gardeners to get started in gardening in your small space. Okay, so tip number one, you can garden in a small space. So I live in a townhome on a very small space, Maryland, and I just decided to first grow um, herbs, I think, and uh, and I'm just going to be cleaning while I'm talking to you. But I initially decided to grow herbs. And that morphed into me growing veggies. So, um, and it's all of these things happen here in my small space. Before I lived in this townhome, I lived in an apartment. And I've been an apartment dweller for most of my life. And um, you just kind of want to start enjoying your space, like living in your space. So it seemed initially like, mm, what can you what can you do? It's just a tiny little space. And whenever I would see gardens, I would always see people with like these huge areas like right they have a huge backyard they live on half an acre or something like that like one of my favorite programs I think that I watch on YouTube one of the favorite programs I watch on YouTube I think the lady and her husband have 10 acres and they've got a pond and they're putting a stream in and they've got all this beautiful garden space and so I felt really discouraged like okay well I'm going to save my money and I'm going to get this kind of place. I, I don't know if I'm ever going to get that kind of place or if I'm ever going to have enough money. But what I do know is you can start to garden in the space that you have. So I'm growing things in containers. So tip number one for me would be, yes, you can do it. Yes, you can grow in your small space. Yes. So that would be my first tip would be for you to get started. Um, my second tip would be don't go crazy buying all of these beautiful planters. Um, what I have found is that growing in the garden is um, it's a lot of trial and error. <laughs> so, some things are going to work out great and some things are not going to work out not so great. You do not have to spend a lot of money on planters. Now you'll see I buy planters because I'm always trying to keep up my aesthetic because as much as I love gardening and I want beautiful things, I also want this to be a place where I can relax and be comfortable. One of my garden buddies actually starts her seeds in um, little plastic cups, which is awesome so she just buys like a big thing of plastic cups pokes little holes in the bottom and starts her ceilings in there that's perfectly fine there's no reason not to do that she also grows things in. um you can also use your your egg crates so your containers the the little ones that break down that your eggs come in poke some holes in and start your ceilings in there and then you can always transplant them um, she also grows um, a lot of things in uh, like the milk cartons or the, the gallon water bottles. So that's something you can actually do. That's oh. <laughs> so that's something you can actually do. You can grow things in milk cartons or water bottles. Um and they'll do just fine. Your garden will be just fine. So my next tip would be to start saving your seeds. Pulling some more tomatoes. Um, when I got started in my garden, I went to 
you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, and my gardener, and I bought seeds online. And I wouldn't say stop doing that um, because you definitely don't have to. But my suggestion would definitely be to save your seeds, which is saving yourself some money. Because a lot of these things, um, you can use your own seeds and they'll come back. Um, some things I don't feel comfortable doing my own seeds. Like, I'm not going to do tomato seeds. I know that you can pull the seeds out of the tomato and you can do the things. I'm not going to do it. Um, but marigolds, bell peppers, jalapenos. I definitely have pulled my own seeds there. And I'm really been pleased. Like, it saves me some money. So I would say my next tip would be to save your seeds. Um, allow things to go to seed. And I think you'll be happy with the result. It's, it's trial and error. So don't beat yourself up if it doesn't come out perfectly the first time. But definitely give it a try. My next tip would be to plant flowers and vegetables together. So this was my cucumber plant and you can see it still has some marigolds in it. And to the point of getting your seeds, you open this marigold packet those are the seeds so I would say save these stop buying marigolds every year that gets gets expensive um, the other reason you want to have your flowers and veggies planted together other than it being really beautiful so this container that's died out was just a container of petunias and verbena but you want pollinators to come to your garden. So for a lot of these veggies you'll plant, first you get the flower and then you get the fruit. So for a lot of the things you're planting, you need the bee. So if you need the bee, you need something to entice the bees. You need something to entice your pollinators. So my suggestion would be put some flowers out. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, you'll enjoy it in your garden and also you'll get more pollinators that way. My next tip for your garden would be plant more than one thing in a container. If you're a container gardener like me, you know that space is a premium. So in this space, I have dill, cilantro, and spinach growing and over here I have arugula and lettuce you can see the lettuce some of it starting to color up some of the red leaf and the reason I say plant more than one thing is because space is at a premium for us we're growing in containers because we're not able to grow in ground so if we're growing in containers Try to maximize as much space as possible. Um, my next tip um, to the point of growing in containers, um, consider companion planting. So oftentimes I'll plant, like you saw my marigolds, those were in the same container with my, my sugar baby watermelon seedlings. Um, right up next to my basil. Uh, also, on the bottom of my tomatoes, I'll often plant alyssum because alyssum brings beneficial bugs that eat the hornworms that eat your um, tomatoes and peppers. So I'll often underplant those things with uh, alyssum or uh, marigolds just because or we're trying to do organic gardening as much as possible. So I don't like spraying. I will if I have to, but I try to stay organic as much as possible. So definitely consider companion planting in addition to your flowers you plant.
This raised bed right now is a monster, but this is a bed of herbs. And what I will say about this is it's things that I actually eat. Um, it's gone crazy, but it is things I actually eat. So this is lemon thyme, and this is regular thyme back here. Um, I usually use this for chicken, fish, stuff like that. This is um, curry. This is sage. This is lemon balm. This is mint. This is a little rosemary. The reason I say plant things that you're going to eat is because why are you planting things that you know you don't want? Like, what's the point of that? <laughs> so I, I, I don't want to sound harsh, <laughs> but why are you planting things you know you're not going to eat? Don't, don't do that. You're wasting your money and your time. Plant things that you know you want to eat. It, don't put lemon thyme in if you know you're never going to eat it. Don't grow lettuce if you know you hate lettuce. So that would be my other thing I would suggest. Make sure that you plant things you know that you want to eat. This is my very sad looking lantana. And it'll probably come back. But this brings me to my next point. Consistent watering. Whatever you put in, you're going to have to have consistent watering schedule for your plants, right? And for me, I put in a drip irrigation system. So I'm going to show you down here. This I've got to cut this watermelon vine. <laughs> Look at these watermelons. So this is, see if it's going to focus. Yeah, this is the drip into the system, the black um tube that you see down there is bringing the water in and then i have these drip placed along the plants so that my plants get consistent watering so that is one of my other tips for you have consistent watering the other i would have for you is prune your plants so this is an Italian basil. And here you can see where I last pruned it. It thrives when you prune it. So it's going to continue to throw off bigger leaves. It's going to continue to grow. This one, you can see I stopped pruning. Once it starts to flower like that, it changes the flavor of your basil. So if you're going to eat it, you definitely want to Keep pruning it back like I've done here with the Italian basil so that you can eat that sooner rather than later. You're, you're, don't be afraid to prune your plants. They need it. Just like we do, right? Sometimes we need a little correction. Sometimes your plants need that. For those of us who are growing in containers, water-soluble fertilizer. When I first plant my plants, I put in usually some Biotone starter fertilizer. And that is, you know, kind of going to release over time. But when you're growing in containers and you're growing fruits and vegetables like I am, your soil needs is going to need a recharge. It's not pulling from the earth like if it was planted in ground. So you're going to have to put in some fertilizer. Regular fertilization of your plants is necessary. Just like you get tired if you were running, 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 and you were doing, 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 you need some food, right? Your plants also need some food. So, fertilizer. Um, take a look at watermelon. I'm going to pull it eventually. But, yeah, just doing its own thing over here. I don't know how big it's going to be, but I'm just going to let it keep going. So, while I am letting it keep going, I keep fertilizing it. Okay, y'all, and this is one of my last tips. I don't know what number tip I'm on. I've just, I'll have to count them up and I'll put it in the description when I put it. But don't overplant your containers. You know, I am terrible for that. I'm always overplanting my containers because I'm always so excited that something grew, right? Like, it's like, oh my God, I see green things peeking through. And so you're like, oh, I'm just going to. I'm just going to leave it because you're so happy something grew. I get it. But don't overplant your containers. You're going to have to, if you put too many seeds down, you're going to have to thin them out. If you know you have a, 
you know, one gallon container, you cannot grow five cabbages in it. You can grow one cabbage in it. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Do not overplant your containers. I want you guys to be successful. I've been doing this for a few years now and I do not have all the answers. So, um, but if you can learn from my mistakes, I would love that. I love that for you. All the, all the joy. Um, uh, two more, and these are my final two, I promise. So two more, find out your hardiness zone, your plant hardiness zone. I live in Maryland in zone 7B. One of the ladies I like to watch lives in zone six. Somebody else, my friend lives in Chicago and she's in zone 5B. So, hey, y'all, I had a puppy emergency. He just needed attention. <laughs> So I am in a different space so that I could finish my last two points. So what I was saying was know your plant hardiness zone. You can find this information through Google. Uh, just put your zip. You can just go into Google, put in plant hardiness zone. You put your zip code in and it'll spit out uh, what your plant hardiness zone is. So like I said, mine is 7B and my friend's 5B or or the lady I like to watch is in zone six. The reason that's important is because it tells you when your last frost date is. It also will let you know um, what you can, when you can plant, when you should plant, right? So I plant my um, watermelon May 1st. If you're in zone five, which it gets a lot colder than it does here in zone 7B, you might have to plant yours later. You might not be able to plant yours on May 1st. You might have to wait until June the 1st. And so that's why the plant hardiness zone is really important. It's not that you can't grow a watermelon or tomatoes or whatever. You might just have to grow them at a different time of year. The last point that I would say is use the Farmer's Almanac. Go to the online Farmer's Almanac. I'll put a link for it. It is so super helpful. The information is still relevant today. I would, you know looking at rainfall and things like that, you would be shocked. And I think it's like, people think it's like, oh, it's old school, I'll just go to YouTube. And I'm not saying don't go to YouTube. I'm not saying don't just ask Google. But if there is a dedicated resource specifically to farmers, which is gardeners, that's kind of what we are, why not use it? Why not take advantage of the information and not reinvent the wheel? So those were the last two final points. I had to come in the house and give lots of cuddles and find a quiet space. But I just wanted to make sure that I wrap this up and give you guys those last two points. And feel free to ask me any questions. Like I said, I'm still new to gardening. I've only been doing this for several years now, maybe five or six um, but I will be happy to share as much information as I have because we're on this journey together. So thanks for hanging out with me today. And I hope you appreciate the video, please. And I never ask you guys this, but please like subscribe. Um, please uh, engage with me because you're my community. And so if I said something wrong or if I can help, or if you have some additional information, please share so we can all grow together. All right. Bye, guys.